Okay, so I'm sitting here at uh, Le Web 2011 with Tim Barker. Tell us who you are, sir, and what, what you're up to. Hi there, yeah, I'm Tim Barker. I run a MIA market strategy yeah. at salesforce.com. Right. And I've been at Salesforce for about five years. Right, okay. And um, this is an unusual show in one sense, isn't it? Because it's, it tends to be very much... Um, consumer-ish in, in yes. one sense, right? Um, a lot of startups here. So what brings Salesforce to an event like this? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. It was our first time at LaWeb, and I'd say there's probably three kind of key reasons that we're here. You're right, there's a lot of consumer brands here. Yeah. So we're speaking, we've met with many, you know, luxury retail brands, and they want to more, hear more about how we've been working with companies like Burberry in terms mm. of creating a more social um, company for them. But then also, a lot of uh, startups use Salesforce. So Groupon are talking today about how they're growing their business on, on our platform. And then the third thing is, is that I'm looking for really innovative ISVs that we can plug into our ecosystem of 100,000 plus customers mm. to really act as a rocket fuel for them. So that's also the developer community, the Heroku message as well. Right. Now, just on the Heroku thing, that's, a, that's of great interest to me because of um, uh, work that I do elsewhere in, in other communities. So when you're talking about innovation for uh, coming into Heroku and out to Salesforce and so what specifically uh, are the areas that you're thinking about more than anything else? So there's specific technology areas or business areas. What, what are you thinking? Well, you know, for us, we've had we've, we focus on having a small footprint of killer applications, really focused around yeah. CRM. And so, what as you'll probably remember, there's a big opportunity for companies to create best of breed applications that integrate with that that beachhead application into a business. Yep. So whether that be financial accounting, whether that be sales compensation, whether that be kind of other or social marketing applications. And so I think the challenge for entrepreneurs, especially in Europe, is how do you unlock a volume um, kind of sales opportunities? How, you know, cost of sale, when I ran a startup, was one of the biggest concerns that I had. Mm. And so I think for developers that want to build, create innovative products and mobile products, which is a great partner for them to work with obviously if they've got an enterprise play yeah because you've got the platform through which they can uh, both develop and distribute right that's right so we you know our platform i think in 2006 or 7 we launched the app exchange yeah, yeah. which is like the you know itunes of software well since then we've also then launched you know we, with heroku we've really had a big push on the open platform you know, proprietary vertical integrated stacks are not really what developers want to be working in. They want choice of language and framework. And so that's what Heroku has given us. Mm. And um, But you're right, the ability then to not just uh, develop an application, but monetize it through, uh, through. And the other thing that we do a lot of is, it's not, unfortunately, selling to enterprises isn't all about online business. You need to be able to be at events and conferences. So we also run a lot of those. We did a user conference with 40,000, you know, of our yeah. customers earlier this year so there's also great opportunities to network and find customers in our ecosystem roughly how many applications are there now uh, built on top of um, the various Salesforce platforms would you say so we've got I believe 250,000 applications that customers have built on their on the platform a quarter there's of a million a quarter of a million now those not all of those are on this app exchange there's a thousand commercialized applications that people can choose from on the on the app exchange and then with Heroku I honestly couldn't give you the number on it because that the number on that is um, people don't publish their Heroku applications in mm. a directory so it's hard for us to put a number on it but we're seeing a vast number of um, startups kind of starting with Heroku as an on-ramp it sits on top of Amazon mm. web services and it simplifies the infrastructure management piece and that's what developers want to focus on okay Tim we're in Europe and Europe is obviously a focus of mine since I live in Europe so what what what, <laughs> what, what can we expect from Salesforce in 2012 I mean what sort of um, things can we think about in terms of maybe product direction if we can talk yes. in those terms yeah. um, but also perhaps in terms of industries that you're looking to yes. uh, to become more um, yeah. engaged with yeah, that's a good question. So if I kind of break it out in a few parts, some, one of the areas, the big focus for us, you know, we spent 10 years of our life creating what's called the cloud computing market now. And I think there's general acceptance now that this is the direction of travel that all organizations are going in, maybe at different speeds in different countries. For us now, our big focus for the next decade is to create our next major industry, which we call the social enterprise. So whether that include, whether that's about making your own employees more social, companies like Schneider Electric in France with more than 17,000 employees collaborating with Chatter is a good example of that. Or whether it's around connecting with your customers, which is, you know, Burberry or Coke or, or Groupon are great examples of that. 
So I would say in terms of what you're going to see in Europe, a few interesting things. One is innovation in um, distribution models. So one example here that we're announcing today at LeWeb is that we've partnered up with Orange um, to open up a, partner, a partnership with them to distribute uh, a new product of ours called Do.com, which is a social project collaboration application. And so there's a shift that we want to, want to help make, especially at small businesses, which is that small businesses you don't sell products to small businesses, they buy products. So that means that no salesman will call. We want products that are easy to self-evaluate and adopt and, mm. and be successful with. So one area is innovation in products that helps widen the reach in small business. Mm -hmm. And um, globally, this Orange um, partnership we announced today is the first one of those that we're doing. And I think a great signal for where there's real opportunity. In terms of the other thing is for us, we can see such traction in some key industries that we or my team is starting to place more bets on those. Mm. So financial services, manufacturing, telco are all areas where either the industry has gone through a significant amount of change or, um, or, is, it, or is a highly competitive industry. And the people that choose our technology aren't doing it because it's the lowest possible price for them to do something. They're doing it because they're in a competitive market where they need to innovate and get, get things out faster. And so I think those markets are where we're placing a bet. I think with our data center for next year that we've announced that will be um, in Europe next year, we obviously see that that will unlock opportunities perhaps in the public sector that uh, might, may have been, if you like, emotionally you know, uh, close to us before. Uh, difficult would be another way of putting it, wouldn't it? But there we go. Just back to the telco thing in Orange in particular. Is is that Orange deal uh, global or is it local to Europe? It's in France now, so it's Orange part of Orange Business Services, right. and they have a portal where they. Um, <coughs> are providing and aggregating a number, number of services mm. and a number of applications. And so with that, as a customer, you'll get a single sign-on into that, you'll get an integrated environment. So they're really using their brand, their trusted brand, you know, with small businesses is a great way to offer them a collection of best-of-breed services mm. that are all integrated together. It'd be great if it proliferated throughout the Orange Group, I would imagine. It, it would. I think this is a great starting point for right. this. And, you know, we've got you know, we've got great relationships with telcos, you know, BT are a reseller in the UK for us. And I think that there's a, you know, they are a trusted, you know, provider in their markets. And so there's a great opportunity for them, for them to establish and go more up the value chain as well. Good times in 2012 for Salesforce then, yeah? Well, you know, what we've done for 12 years is really the most important thing is the success of our customers. Because right. a subscription-based business can't be successful without repeat customers. Mm. And so I think that's what's kept us where we are. And I think what's interesting, though, is the whole market, the social, mobile, local, which is the theme of the web, is just shifting what customers' expectations are. So, yeah, I think, you know, as long as we focus on those core things, uh, well, any, any, any business can be successful. Fantastic, Tim. Thank you very That's much very indeed. Well. Thank Take you. Care.